Okay, so in this tutorial, we are going to transform this image into whatever the image was uh, displayed as the after image, as I am not entirely sure how it's going to turn out, but I have a rough idea. We have some Bokka texture effects that I found on unsplash.com from uh, this author here and light streaks from this guy. And then I've got three textures that I've selected from a couple of our grunge paper texture packs. I'll include these below the video. Um, you could download them for free and use them for whatever you want. In this particular scenario, these textures have been split into two different categories. So these textures I'm going to use to manipulate the original photograph to make it look as if it was part of the actual photo itself. And then these textures will be what I'd like to apply on top of them to give them that printed roughed up look um, that I'm going to be going for. So first off, we're going to start with these textures oh, um, and apply them. And we're going to use blending modes in Photoshop. These are your best friends when it comes to combining different images. We can play around with these. I already know the screen is going to work. So then I will grab my eraser tool, or at least I want to, because this box is very overpowering. So I'm just going to erase it from there. It can stay in other places. This is just going to be a quick job for the purposes of the video. I think that looks quite nice. And I like that it's it's gold, but it does overpower the image a little bit. So I might bring that down. That's a little bit better. I think that's better. And then I'll close that. I'm happy with that. We'll grab the light streaks because I wanted a light source from below, you see. So I think moving it to there might be good. I'm not making it any bigger um, because we don't want pixels. Um, but I can make it smaller if I want to. But too small, then we start to get this dark bit from the image. So I don't want that. Maybe that works. Yeah, that works. And then uh, I know screen again is, is going to work from experience. But again, I'll uh, I'll just flicker through them because you can get some different effects um, with them. Like that one's quite nice. It's changed the whole dynamic of the photo. Um, but I know screen is going to work for what I want it because um, it's quite bright. In this case, it's too bright at the moment. So I'm going to bring that over. I didn't want that top bit, you see. Let's bring that over. I'll add a layer mask. So what this does, it allows us to edit the photo to remove parts of the photo without actually doing it to the image itself. So we, we can use this mask here and I'm going to grab a gradient tool and I'm going to draw from bottom to top. And I think there's a soft light source. I don't want anything too strong. Oh, and I think that will do. For now. Now the issue when you're combining various images into one is one, the colors are off and two, the texture is off. So if I was to hide, let's say this light streak effect, right? You can see immediately that the skin and the original photo has grain. The Bokka effect does, but not as much. It's much smoother. So we don't want that. So at this point, if we're happy with the overall effect, we would create a new layer, apply image, or this is at least what I would do, filter, camera raw filter, and then I'll zoom in. And we just want to add grain to the whole piece. I love grain. Grain is, it adds another element to the piece. Uh, so we can, this is under the effects category, by the way, grain, you can add the, the amount of grain the size of the granules, I suppose we could refer them to as, and um, the roughness of the grain. Um, so we'll add that. And now you can see that the grain has been applied to everything. And it would be, I mean, you know it's been edited, but it's not super obvious. I mean, it might be. But what I will do actually is add maybe like a, I don't know. 
a slight warm filter on top. That's quite nice. Okay, so we're happy with that. So I will now create another layer that encompasses all that we've done so far. And now I will grab this texture, which it's going to be part of our little texture stack that we're going to overlay on top of all of this, right? To make it, to, to really make it pop. This was quite simply just black ink post uh, printed onto paper using an old inkjet printer that I've got. We're going to try, as it's dark, so what we want, we want the, the white parts to pop out, right? So as the background's dark, screen, light, and color dodge, all these, these focus on the white parts and bring them out. But let's say the the background was white and the parts we want are the black parts. Then darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn. These will bring that out. And then we've got all the other ones. So overlay, soft light, hard light. You know, it, it, it focuses particularly on the light difference and, and, and all these. They all do different things. Um, but usually for texture overlays... Soft light can come in, overlay sometimes, it's very harsh, you see, and people tend to overlay and then lower the opacity and then play around with that. Um, and divide can sometimes work. Um, you see that, but that's pretty much doing what we, what I explained before. So with the, when the background's black and we want the white to pop, we use screen, that's pretty much the same as divide. So you're, you're going to mainly stick to these or these, I think, or at least in my experience, that's what I've been doing. Um, now that gives it quite a strong printed look. So you can see that before and after. I quite like that. I might lower the opacity ever so slightly so it's not too much. And then we'll grab this one here. Add that one on top. Let's have a look. Um... See, I went straight to screen again. So I made these textures with kind of this use in mind. You don't necessarily have to use a photo. It can be a, a simply a color. Um, it's a very quick display of that. It can be a color. You see, I just orange color and you can start stacking layers and, and, and textures on top of that and create this really cool background upon which you can then create your design. You know, and you would put the text on top of the color, but beneath beneath the textures. Um, let's say we just applied some text. So you can see that, that texture then just applies to that. But if we obviously did it on top of the textures, it's, it's different and then below the color, it disappears. So you don't necessarily have to do it with photos, but I think photos are the the easiest way to display uh, what we're trying to achieve here. Um, that's quite cool. And then this is a, an old book cover. This is why I love working with vintage materials because they age just beautifully and you, you cannot recreate this. This is so hard to recreate. Lighten. Hmm. Quite distracting, isn't it? Um, hmm, you know what? Don't think we'll use that one. I think this, for the purposes of the, of the tutorial, that, so that, with just a few textures, it's pretty cool. Um, but what I will do is apply it again and just have a little play around with the level. See this, is, I didn't notice that. That is very strong. So if I can just tone down the white ever so slightly, maybe go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast, lower that contrast just a bit. And then maybe up the brightness. No, I'll bring that back down. See that contrast just brings this part in alignment with this part. Because I think, hmm, it's just, I'm 
just being I'm just being fussy at this point. But that's the basics of how I would apply texture to an image, uh, particularly the textures that we've created. Again, like I said, I'll include these for free down below, along with a, a handful of other ones. Um, and that's it for this one. Uh, the next one, I think I'm going to cover typography because um, there are some really cool effects that you can achieve by combining textures with typography. So stick around for that one. Thanks for watching.